Today I'm going to show you how to work on a small oblong piece of mount board. This is black mount board which has been given a couple of coats of clear gesso to give it a good surface. As you can see it's got a slight shine to it while it's damp but don't worry about it once it's completely dry I'll show you the difference that it makes. And here we are and we still have a slight tooth and now I've actually fastened it down to a nice solid board so that I can work with that. And we're going to start off with a layer of thick acrylic paint in a nice gold by De La Rowney. And here we are just smoothing that out a little bit with a palette knife while it's still wet just to give us a little bit more of a smooth surface to work upon. And now to this lovely gold surface I'm going to apply the texture paste. This is the bought one not the one I make myself and again it's De La Rowney putting it on with a good medium sized palette knife and just bringing it into the centre of the painting because I want it to all radiate out from the centre. So I'm just going to keep putting on some good dollops of paste and move it about with a knife and various other tools which I'll show you very shortly. As we apply the paste we're looking to create areas where there's going to be texture and little bits of interest when we start to put the paint on. It's not always easy to tell at this point, but it's nice to just have lots of different layers, levels, little bits where the knife has caught and moved and creating that lovely texture. So that's what we're looking for as you start to apply. Those of you who've watched before will know that I have quite a nice selection of palette knives with some interesting edges and this is another one. This has got a really nice sort of curved edge which you can make great shapes in your paste with. You can pull it out, you can just do squiggles, whatever you really like. Again it's just going to add interest and texture to our paste. And now I've got another little interesting one to use. It's got a very triangular base but very, very tiny serrations on the edge. So I'm just using those to put like little bubble marks or little pox or whatever we want to call them. And if you want them in a different way then obviously you just have to turn the knife over and you'll get your effects with that. And here's a great tool. If you don't have anything fancy to make texture with, just get an old toothbrush. Not one that you're using now, preferably, um, but yeah, you can add great texture. I've decided I don't like that little bit there, so it's easy to scrape it out while the paste is still wet. And now paste is dry. So these are some of the tools I'm going to be using. I've got some white titanium paint and a variety of blues and turquoise. It's lovely and dry, so I'm going to start in the centre and build out the colours as I go. The green is a really beautiful colour, it's a green gold by Golden and it will change colour slightly depending on what you put with it. So I'm working in the middle, working outwards. This is one of the beautiful uh, metallic inks but it needs a little help to move so I'm going to just use a pipette with some clean water just to wet the surface first and then as I actually put the ink in you can see it starts to spread a little bit easier. It's quite thick because of the metallic flakes in it which is what it gives it its shine. So a little bit of extra moisture and then a little bit of tilting will help. And I cannot resist adding the Burnt Sienna ink in with this colour. It is just so beautiful. It's a really vibrant shade. You see now as it starts to move across the white, it's stunning. With the turquoise, it just looks amazing. So I'm just using the Catalyst blade to push that around, move it into the little cracks and crevices within the texture paste that we've made. And it will add interest even when colours are put over the top later on. We won't lose that beautiful colour that's there. Indeed, we can add to it. Just adding in a little bit more of this beautiful green gold. It just looks so bright here. This is pretty much as it comes out of the tube. So you can see it's a sort of a, almost a lime greeny yellow, um, but it, it's just absolutely beautiful. A little bit more of that copper ink, and you can see it's sort of staying in place. So we will have to help that to move a little bit more. And this time I'm just using a damp paintbrush to move that around a bit. I don't want it to go mad, so I'm just helping it by pushing it a little bit with a dampened brush. 
and also the blade. If you feel that it needs to move a bit further, you can use a blade as well. If you haven't got a blade, then you can use your fingers or you can use a, a credit card, but they are a little bit firmer. So something with a silicon blade is great. Perhaps even a spatula from the kitchen if you have one that's spare. decided now to add in some of the deeper blue shades just to give a little bit of depth we've got some really nice pale colours going on but we also need the depth to underpin that to give us the contrast so taking in a little bit of ultramarine blue and some of the the beautiful um, greenish blue shades that I've got here and just adding it into different areas to give us highlight remember if we want to see the lighter colours we've got to have something dark for them to work against otherwise they all become the same value and we need to vary those values to get the impact that we're looking for again using the palette knife you can scrape the colour on makes it a really interesting effect again with the, that beautiful green gold and the white this time really picks out bright colours almost looks yellow from this angle Now I'm going to go in with the white acrylic ink, which sounds a bit odd, but it will actually soak into the, the grooves and the little dots that we've got and just soften some of the colours down a little bit. I'm just going to put it in various areas and it is quite thick actually, um, but that's not a problem because we've got our water spray so we can thin that down and start to get it to move about a bit now. It looks very much like the sea with the white foam on it. Now I want to just tidy around the edges. So I'm using the same gold that we used to make the background and I'm just painting it on and I'm not worried too much if it goes actually over the little bits of texture paste. What it will do will graze the surface and create some beautiful colors that are going on. And you can use a brush further in and start to really add little bits of, of paint wherever you feel. It doesn't have to be bright gold, it will just rub across the surface with the flat brush and make the most beautiful textures. And to finish, I just want to go into some of the areas and add some indigo blue inks, again to give little bits of depth and darkness, making them move with a damp paint brush and just taking them so that they actually connect and give a little bit of movement and continuation within the piece. Otherwise it will just look a bit disjointed and a little bit not connected to each other. So we want to get that movement going and that's what I'm doing here.